Hey everyone, Mitch coming in with the Creator Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, I've got some amazing budget pickups for you. Whether your budget is, well, maybe 25 cents a card, 50 cents a card, 75 cents a card, or $1 a card, or if you have no budget, they're still great cards. But yeah, I'm going to be taking you through another great episode of Crushing Quarters, highlighting some amazing budget cards. Let's jump into it. So first up at 25 cents, that's right, for this one quarter, you can be the proud owner of Aeon Engine. Now, this card I will say is not for every deck out there, but there are certain decks out there that can really utilize this card in some really cool ways. And it's also just a nice way to kind of put a little spin on a commander game. Aeon Engine is an artifact for five that enters battlefield tapped. You can tap an eggs out to reverse the game's turn order. So, for example, if play has proceeded clockwise around the table, now goes counterclockwise. So, essentially, you kind of just change the fates of everyone at the table, which is a very interesting way to go about the game. And also, you can really just, just demolish someone's chances of winning the game with this kind of card. And also, you know, elevate your own chances. So, essentially, you know, you wait till the next player's turn, most likely. You make some deals with other players on when you're going to activate this. And you just say, hey, other player, either on the opposite side of the table or on my left, you're in big trouble because we're just going to reverse the turn's order, essentially. And you're going to have to wait like six, seven turns before you get your next turn. That means that if that player's wide open, they can very easily be taken out. At the very least, this card is kind of like a delayed extra turn spell for you. I mean, in a way. Again, reverse the turn's order. You're just going to get your next turn quicker, essentially. Also, if you don't have a way to copy this, yeah, there are plenty of ways to copy artifacts out there. It's one of the very few repeatable extra turn spells, essentially, if you've got any kind of, you know, artifact cloning effects. So have fun with that. Moving on, a, well, more standard card, I would say, would be to create pain. This card is now 25 cents after all its reprints. This is a card that was nowhere near budget years and years and years ago. Now it finally is. Source for eight mana until six black black. Draw creatures that can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature. So this way, cycle it away for three black black. When you do so, all creatures get minus two, minus two until I've turned. So this card, again, does have some flexibility. If you want to just take out smaller creatures earlier on the game, sure, cycle it away. More likely, though, yeah, utilize this for a very big play. Clear the board, number one. And number two, draw an absurd amount of cards. Again, this card is only just you know, so good in a one-on-one -on -one, you know, uh, strategy, essentially. Not one-on-one -on -one strategy, in a one-on-one -on -one gameplay, essentially, because there's only so many creatures on the board. But in Commander, there are a ton of creatures on the board. And uh, yeah, you're going to get to draw a card for every single one of them taken out. Next up, speaking of that, in a similar way, there's Body Count. A card that I think has a lot of potential. An instant for two and a black in the right deck, I should say. Spectacle for a black. Draw a card for each creature that died under control this turn. So again, with Spectacle, you can cast this spell for its Spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent lost life this turn. Now, typically, I mean, just even on your opponent's turns, just normally, without even having to try, someone might be losing some life. Again, you could incentivize someone to attack someone else. Maybe you've got a way to drain players, especially if you are an aristocrat-style strategy, which is where this card really shines. Because if this is going to be an instant speed, essentially one mana, yeah, you know what? Probably just draw... 10 plus cards once you're set up properly again aristocrat style strategy usually like to get a lot of creatures out a lot of creature fodder out essentially and then sacrifice them freely with something like a viserys here essentially and also take advantage of other cards like you know zulport cup to drain your opponents and get other you know card advantage other you know with grim horror specs and things like that and so essentially you can utilize you know that in your favor essentially sacrifice one of your creatures drain your opponents all of a sudden this just costs a single mana essentially then cast it, you know, after you've sacrificed however many creatures, right? Or this can be a good response to a board wipe as well, so make sure you keep that in mind. But now let's move on to two quarters, and yeah, there's a very spicy card that we're going to be starting off with that would probably never be printed these days, in green especially, Revelation. All players play with their with the cards in their hand face up with the tail. Basically, all players reveal their hands, essentially. It's just everyone plays with their hand revealed. An enchant world for a green. So, again, that's just old kind of, you know, it's an enchantment. It's not, you know, an aura, those kinds of things. Anyways, this is a very, 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 very strange effect for green to have. That being said, it is an effect that can really turn a game on its head because... Yeah, players are really good at politicking. Many players out there are really good at politicking. And there's only so much politicking you can do when your hand's on the table. You can't bluff players. You can't say, oh, I'm not going to do that or that. Oh, I've got, 
I don't have anything in my hand. No, no, no. By giving perfect information to everyone, you're kind of just laying out everyone's strategies on the table, and there aren't any surprises that are going to come about. So yeah, this is a card that it's definitely not for every deck out there, but it is a card that, you know, it can help. Well, depends uh, on how good you are at politicking, I should say, because it could rub players the wrong way, and they might just try to take you out once you play it because they might get annoyed with it. But also, if one player has got just an amazing hand and amazing board presence, you're like, hey, look, we all need to team up against this player. Look, I, you've got that. I've got this. All right, let's do this. So yeah, again, this is a card that... Probably is going to work better for certain decks out there. Maybe they can take advantage of what's in players' hands, but still, just an interesting card to think about at 50 cents. Moving on, Duelist Heritage. My goodness, this card is so good. And for 48 cents, an incredible deal for it. Chain for two and a white. Whenever one more creature's attack, you may have target attack and creature gain double strike until turn. This one is very easy politicking, as well as just a benefit for you. So again, essentially, just uh, anyone goes to combat. Again, anyone attacks. Whenever one more creature's attack, you can choose to give a creature double strike. So you can give, say, you know, again, if an opponent is going to be attacking another opponent, you're like, oh, yeah, cool. Let's just give that creature double strike. If an opponent's going to be attacking you, you can be like, hey, you know what? How about you don't attack me? If you don't attack me, you see that one creature you're attacking with? Let's just swing that somewhere else. You swing that at that player over there, it's going to hit twice as hard. Maybe they've got a combat damage trigger that they can benefit from as well. And again, at the very least, again, for like a Voltron style strategy for your own, or maybe you've got a commander or, you know, a creature that has, again, a combat damage trigger, or just, yeah, wanting to hit harder with your own creatures, Double Strike is a very, very good thing. Finally, if it is sense, so we've got Thorn Mammoth. This card is incredible in creature based strategies. A 6 6 trampling elephant for 7 mana in total. Whenever it and another creature is battlefield under your control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control. Again, it does say up to one, so you don't have to do it. Now, typically, you are going to be doing it. Typically, you are going to have creatures out there that are small enough that you can take them out with this. Again, six power is a lot to hit something with, essentially. And also, six toughness is usually good enough to survive most creatures. So, yeah, whenever you are getting creatures in play, you can destroy up to, you know, probably one, maybe even two creatures per turn, depending on, you know, what kind of a creature base or token strategy you have with this. And again, this one, essentially, if you can give it indestructible, if you can give it, you know, other ways to essentially you know pump its power pump its toughness you've got more ways to protect it while you're going through this and of course there's plenty of ways to just kind of wipe boards with this and just keep boards clear of creatures so that's a really good card for again just 60 cents 50 cents sorry i said 60 for a creature based strategy But now let's move on to three quarters that's right at 73 cents we've got shajiri shelter an instant for one in a white and that says target creature control gains protection from the color of your choice until on turn. Oh, and, and also it just happens to be an MDFC. MDFC. Modal dual face card. Yeah, there we go. It enters the battlefield tapped on the back as a land that can tap for a white. So again, this is basically like not never going to be a dead card in your hand, really. This is a card that you can either utilize as a land drop if you really need to. Or yeah, just utilize this a fantastic way to protect one of your key pieces. Yeah, probably your commander, maybe from a removal spell. Maybe it's also a way, you know, actually get a creature through. Maybe your commander if you got a Voltron strategy. But again, it is a card that does not really take up a spot in your deck at all. Again, it is basically one of your land spots. So because of that, again, it just has this extra flexibility for you. And it's a very fantastic card. Many MDFCs have gotten quite expensive over the years. This one is still relatively budget friendly. Again, 73 cents is a steal for this card. Next up, speaking of a steal perplex now cards like this i think tend to get overlooked a little bit because it is well a tutor that is a bit more specific let's quickly read the card though an instant for one blue and a black counter target spell controller discards their hand that is a huge 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 effect 90 percent of the time you're going to be countering that spell i i guess i should say i mean i guess it depends on the situation still i mean if a player is about to win the game or whatever yeah they're probably willing to discard their hand but still again a player having to discard their hand is a massive downside that is a game ending potentially play for them essentially if they're like uh yeah i'm gonna go down from like six cards to zero and then i've got essentially have to top deck for the rest of the game hoping i actually get cards that i need to win so typically this is going to counter a spell more importantly though again it is very flexible where it has transmuted for one blue and a black so basically pay that discard it go get any card out of your library that costs three exactly three so it is a pretty specific tutor that being said if you look at the mana curves essentially in commander yeah there's a lot of spells out there you're probably gonna have in your commander deck that are at three and there's also maybe even combo pieces or just very key pieces to your strategy that are going to be at three as well so you got a decent amount of those in your endemir colors 
Yeah, utilize this card. It's incredible. And again, this is kind of like an uncounterable tutor. Yeah, you can stifle it, but many players aren't playing stifle effects, but you can't counter someone transmuting, essentially. So you just basically go tutor for exactly what you need. Your opponent can't stop that. Or again, it's a great counter spell for you as well. Next up, Joyrus Familiar at 74 cents. A 2-2 Flying Bird for four man historic spells you cast, cost wants to cast. Artifacts, Legendary Sagas, or Historic. Again, if you basically have any of these kinds of decks, you should be considering this, especially an artifact-based strategy, because... Artifacts can be quite broken, again, especially when you have more and more cost reduction. So it's absolutely incredible. I love this card for artif artifact-based strategies. Again, if you have, you know, Legendary Tribal, though, this can also be great. Saga Tribal is coming more of a thing as well. Also a card again. Basically, just, hey, are you looking to reduce the cost of any of these? Yep, definitely utilize this bird for that. Now let's move on to four quarters. So that's right, for $1, you can be the proud owner of Instill Energy. Yeah, that's right, this really weird old card that is written very strangely, back from 1994. Enchant creature for a single green mana. So this is an aura. It's written pretty weird, and it's kind of hard to read, but here we go. You may untap target creature one additional time during your turn. Target creature may also attack. The turn comes into play. So this has been, you know, Oracle texted, essentially. It, it basically means that, hey, uh, it's an aura uh, for just a single green mana. And the creature that's enchanted can attack as though it had haste. So essentially, you can't just activate abilities right away as though they had haste, but you can attack right away. So that's nice. Again, one green mana to give something haste is already just kind of weird. But more importantly, though, you can basically pay zero to untap that creature once a turn. So if you have, say, a commander that has an amazing activated ability that requires it to tap, this is a great way to say, cool, I get two taps out of it every single turn thanks to this, or just kind of like pseudo-vigilance in a way as well. But yeah, more importantly, hey, you tap your commander for whatever ability it has, you play this on it, you untap it, next turn you get to the exact same thing. So yeah, it's a really, really good card. One that, again, you typically don't see in green and you know, giving something haste essentially to attack. Very strange. But yeah, a very, very good card for the right deck out there. The commander probably has an activated ability. Or if you have a lot of creatures, I should say, that have activated abilities. Next up, Altered Ego. A really, really good clone effect. 0-0 zero, zero Shapeshifter for X2 Green Blue. It can't be countered. So again, that already can just be huge and crucial when you say, oh, I really, really need to make this happen. You can make it happen. You may have an entrance battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except an entrance with X additional counters on it. Basically, you can take the biggest creature on the battlefield if you really want and say, like, oh, let's just make a slightly bigger version of that. Or take advantage of, again, maybe ETBs. Take advantage of, again, if you've got a commander that maybe has a death trigger that you can copy and then you'll get the legendary rule. See, a lot of weird things that you can do with clones. But yeah, essentially, a very, very good clone. Again, just at a base level, this is clone that can't be countered. I mean, it does cost a green instead of, you know, uh, the three and a blue, just regular clone. But again, it's the upside to be able to use more into that X to make this an even bigger creature. See, a very, very, very good clone at $1. Finally, Splendid Reclamation. This can be a game-changing card. Source for three and a green. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Yeah, I mean, if you are in any kind of a deck that's running a good amount of fetch lands, if you're in a deck that might be self-milling, if you're in a deck that might be sacrificing lands, this is a massive play. I mean, especially for decks out there that are going to have, like, landfall triggers as well. This is just, hey, uh, four mana potentially ramp. I mean, I I've ramped upwards of ten lands, essentially, with this kind of a card. It's absolutely absurd when it hits. It's got to be for the right deck. Obviously, it's not going to be just for a deck that, again, doesn't have any fetch lands, doesn't mill, doesn't get lands in the graveyard in any way. But again, if you are getting lands in your graveyard, definitely consider this card because, my goodness, the potential it has, again, to just ramp you so far ahead of your opponents. And you're going to scatter. It doesn't only use the mana right away. Again, the land to the battlefield tapped. But still, the next turn, you might even be able to double up your mana, essentially, with a card like this. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and found some useful budget buys on this one with this Crushing Quarters episode. So if you are interested in any of these cards, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below and comment below with your thoughts on this one. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.